So I made a video about um, throttle configuration in uh, CleanFlight. And later I found out, very, very quickly, I found out that I had at least one major mistake in it. And then, so I made a second video that uh, corrected that mistake. And then I found out there was another mistake and that was just too much. And I went ahead and took it right down. And so if you're wondering where that video went, um, it's, I'm, I'm working on a better one, a cor uh, hopefully correct one. Um, I, um, I, I often know things and, uh, and I'm happy to talk about them and share them with other people and hopefully help other people learn things too. I really enjoy that. But occasionally I think that I know more than I really do. And in fact, I've got some fundamental misunderstanding. And in that case, my tendency to share the things I know means I'm spreading misinformation. So I try to be really careful about that. I try to make sure that I'm right when I'm telling people things. And I uh, try to make sure that when I put bad information, I know how bad information can live on the internet forever. And I don't want to be that guy. So that's where that video went. I'm going to give you this one instead real quick. Um, you know, one of the things people say about ESC calibration is that ESC throttle calibration is, it, you don't need that anymore in today's day and age with multi-rotors and flight controllers. Just set your min throttle and your max throttle to whatever your min command and your and your max uh, throttle are, and that'll be fine. Just whatever it is, if it's, you know, set it to 2,000 or 1,100 or whatever, 1,000, whatever it needs to be, just set it where it needs to be, set them all the same, and you'll be fine. And I'm not convinced about that. The people who say that, like Boris, I believe, I don't want to misattribute, but I believe I've heard Boris say that. And Boris certainly knows what he's talking about, if indeed he said that, which I'm not 100% sure that he did. If it wasn't Boris, it was somebody whose opinion that you and I probably both trust on matters multi-rotor said, just don't even do throttle. Why is even throttle calibration even in there, they said. It's dangerous. It's confusing and it's dangerous. And why is it dangerous? It's dangerous because it encourages people to turn their throttle up to max and then plug their uh, ESCs in. <laughs> and if, uh, if anything goes wrong there, suddenly you've got a swarm of angry bees trying to eat your face off. And that's no good. Well, I don't disagree. Uh, you should probably do throttle calibrations with your props off uh, or one of those light bulb current limiters. Uh, if you've got one, like the video I, I put out and many other people have, have talked about them. That'll prevent your copter from spinning up, or you could uh, you could restrain it. Although don't do like I did one time and restrain it with something that wasn't nearly heavy enough, and then it took off and dragged the heavy thing with it. Uh, so here's why I think throttle calibration. I I'm going to keep using it, and I think it's important. I these are little b ESCs. They're actually Zeus ESCs. Same thing from Multi Rotor Mania, and they are uh, they're very good ESCs by all accounts. Uh, top top notch ESCs up there with any Kiss or or X rotor, you know, in terms of performance and manufacturing quality and so on. They're Scilabs ESCs, so uh, we know that they have. I believe that means that they have an external oscillator, whereas many Atmel ESCs don't have an external oscillator, and um, that, that that means their timing can be not as accurate. Uh, the the Atmel ESCs without an external oscillator will use they have an internal oscillator that in, inside the the chip and it's sort of a a rough and dirty timing but it's not nearly as accurate as an external oscillator so what that means is that when the ESC tries to figure out what a microsecond is if it if it doesn't have accurate timing then it's not going to be consistent it may be consistent within itself but it's not going to be consistent with other devices that may be running at a slightly different speed. And they also may be very temperature sensitive. But devices with a good external oscillator will have a relatively consistent time reference uh, under various, bit, bit from one ESC to another, and also under various temperature and other con external conditions. So, so what I'm getting at is that these are good ESCs that ought to have very consistent time reference and so on. Now. I just did a calibration, and the calibration, throttle calibration, tells you what the ESC saw. Now, they all saw the same thing. They all saw the same top of the range and the same bottom of the range. Now, let's see how consistent they are, these four ESCs. 1024, 1928, 1052, 1992. By the way, I'll let you know, my ESC2 always seems to read a little high. The other three are pretty close. So let's, let's forget ESC number two for a minute. 1024, 1928, 1020, 1916, 1020, 1916. Dead on. 
Actually, the last two are dead on. And the first one, 1024 to 1020, it's four milliseconds or out, micros, millisecond, milliseconds out. No, sorry, four microseconds. Got a little confused there. 1916 to 1928, well, it's a little more than four. So it's not consistent across the top and bottom of the range either, is it? It's four milliseconds, 1024 to 1020. Yeah, it's four milliseconds out of the bottom of the range, 1928 to 1916. That's uh, 16, that's 12 out at the top of the range. Pardon me, I, I don't do math in my head very well. I hope I got that right. I'm not gonna pull up a calculator and check though. So they're not 100% consistent. And then number two, I don't know what's going on with number two. It reads 1052 versus 1024. So it is about 1024 to 1052. It's about 30 off, 30 microseconds off. And at the top of the range, 1992 versus 1928. Oh man, 28 to 92. That's, that's, that's huge. What's going on there? It's like it's, a, it's not even linear. So uh, I don't know what to make of that. But I will tell you that if I didn't calibrate my ESCs, I wouldn't have caught that. If I didn't do a throttle calibration, I wouldn't have noticed that they were different. So at the very least, the throttle calibration gives you a, a reference for what the ESC thinks it's seeing and can let you see that they're, they're reasonably close. And if one of them is out, you'll know. Frankly, these guys are, are close enough that probably it wouldn't make any difference when you're flying and you'd be fine. But how would you ever know that you had uh, an odd one out like this if uh, if you weren't able to do a throttle calibration and get the ESC to tell you what it was seeing as the top and bottom of the range? Inactivity so, alarm. Oh, pardon me. Inactivity alarm. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do about this, uh, this ESC that seems out. Because not only is it off, it's not just off across the whole range, but it's actually... It's actually got sort of a, a different slope. It's more off at the top of the range than it is at the bottom. That's that's certainly interesting. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it, but uh, I do think that throttle calibration is a useful tool. Uh, and uh, it's, it, if you're using Atmel ESCs or any ESC without an external timer, then I think you're going to see much less consistent results. And the throttle calibration will be more important to get the ESCs to have a consistent curve with each other despite the fact that their timing may not be perfectly accurate. All right, that's that's my two cents. And I will, I will work on this other video about min throttle, max throttle, and so on. You may see that in a week or so after I'm sure I've got my facts straight. And, and I'm also going on vacation tomorrow, so uh, I probably won't be posting any videos. But you'll probably still see me around the forums because I do like posting there. Bye-bye.